Hey guys, all right, so I have to create a self portrait of me playing the drums back here. So uh, I'm gonna use, it's gonna be a three light setup using uh, studio strobes actually. And um, I'm gonna gel two of them. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go about setting it up and then I'll talk about it a little bit. So here we go. I got one light left. I'm gonna set that just over here by my camera. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Uh, and I'm gonna set that up using a, uh, a parabolic reflector, which is actually a very cool and inexpensive light modifier. One thing, uh, when I actually take some photos, because these lights are kinda aimed at the camera, there's gonna be some light spills, so I'm gonna have to flag them off. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. But uh, first, the main light here. Okay, let me bring it out front so I can show you. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on this stand. Plug it in. <clears throat> okay, this is the parabolic reflector. It's basically an umbrella. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna attach this bracket. It's getting real bright in here. Wow, hold on. So this bracket fits on here like this. Okay, and then this fits on the light, like so. It creates a really beautiful, nice, even, soft light. So it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna just set that just over here. Let me show you my camera. Okay, so this is, this is my um, 6D Mark II, and the reason that this camera is gonna work for me is because it has built inside of it an intervalometer, which will take a sequence of photos, in my case two seconds apart, so when I get behind the drums, I hit the shutter button once, it fires frames every two seconds. So that way, once I get focused and get my lighting all set and everything, I can just go. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to set this parabolic reflector off camera so it's going to be aiming at the entire scene, lighting in from the front, no gel, just pure white light. I'm going to take a couple shots without flagging off these two lights in the back so you can see that there's going to be a lot of spill in the frame. Okay, so now I have to block the light from coming into the camera. Uh, so I'm going to use light stand, A clamp, phone cord, black. All right, so that's the whole setup there. And now I'm going to take some pictures. I'll show you what, they're, what they look like. Okay, what I decided to do, since I got the photo that I actually like, um, I'm going to drag the shutter. In other words, I'm going to take some shots using, I have here, these are, these are hot lights, they're daylight balanced continuous light. I have two of those plus this thing I have in my hand. They provide light for the ambient shot with a slow shutter. So these lights are going to allow blur into the scene when I'm playing. The flashes are going to stop the action. So it should work out. Let's see what happens. Okay guys, I'm done. I'm gonna show you the pictures. Uh, but I wanna explain a little bit about how um, you would combine ambient and flash, how to get the proper ratio. So really what it comes down to, um, and you don't need a meter, I did use a meter. So for those of you who are like really into the numbers, I'll tell you what my light's metered at. But you don't need a meter because you just take a couple frames and make adjustments. All right, so basically I had um, three continuous lights. They gave me my ambient exposure. And here's a picture of just the ambient exposure. All right, so here, for those of you that, that um, are into metering, my main key light metered at 
f2.8. My um, red gelled light metered at 1.5 and my blue gelled light metered at f2. Now here's the thing, when you put these, these, these are the gels by the way, um, it's the Color Effects Lighting Pack by Lee Filters. I don't remember where I got this, probably b and I don't remember how much it was. But uh, when you put a gel like this uh, in front of your flash, you're going to lose probably close to two stops of light. Even though the output of both of these flashes was significantly higher than my main key light, because I had the gels in front of them, they actually metered lower. All right, so anyway, my combined exposure of all three lights metered at f2.8. Okay, my camera's exposure was f8, believe it or not, a quarter of a second ISO 100. So why f8 when my combined light ratios were metering at f2.8? In other words, um, my ambient exposure was providing more light than the flashes. So the point is the flashes were stopping the action but I really wanted this to be about blur so my ambient exposure which was a quarter of a second was actually getting more light to the camera than the flashes. So for those of you that don't understand metering and what I'm talking about when I say that the, the overall scene metered at f2.8 what I mean, what that means is, the meter is telling me that in order to get the proper exposure with just the flash output, you should set your camera to f2.8. Well, I had mine at f8, which is three stops darker. So I'm darkening my flash by three stops from what the meter was saying. All right, well, again, I wanted the ambient exposure to dominate because I wanted lots of blur. So um, here are the photos. I chose two that were the uh, finished photos. So, I mean, you know, you don't need a meter to do this because basically you can take a shot. Um, I set my camera on a timer, ran behind the drums, just moved around a little bit, and then kept adjusting until it looked good. But I also had the meter as sort of a backup reference. Anyway, here's a takeaway for me, in case you're wondering. Um, this was very difficult to do all by myself. I had to set everything up. I, there was nobody here to help me, so, you know, I know. But the point is, um, it was difficult. But see, that's good because when I'm shooting a client and we do something creative like this, it'll be a whole lot easier. All right, so that's it, guys. Hope this was helpful. See you next time.